Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here. So today I wanted to talk about GPT for all chat. I haven't talked about GPT for all on my channel yet. And so I wanted to kind of uh, give some thoughts on it, uh, especially concerning some limitations and show you guys kind of how you can get it, install it and start using it. We'll get that installation part out of the way quickly because it's super easy. Thanks to the incredible work that this repository and the team working on it have done. You can just install it with an installer. Uh, like a normal program. It's fantastic. I would recommend that you get the installer from the actual repo. Make sure that it is what it says it is. Once you have done that, it's very easy to run. You just double click on the application and it pops up and you can start using it. So I'll show you a demonstration of a prompt, which will be, you know, hey, I'm making a YouTube video talking about GPT for all chat. What should the title be? As you can see, the inference is not very quick, but it's also very far from slow. And this is all running on CPU. I did nothing other than install with the installer and then double click on the application in the folder. In terms of barrier to entry, this is definitely the best tool I've seen. There is no work required by the user. You can just start using it right away. And the performance is actually not bad. In terms of inference latency, the results might vary depending on the hardware quite significantly. The performance in terms of like what it can do and how it does it is pretty cool. So I'll show you an example of that. Uh, because of the way they've set this up and they've, you know, kind of uh, let us interact with it through this very familiar UI at this point to a lot of people, I feel like this kind of gray is very familiar to us all. Um, you know, we could actually have a more conversation style uh, prompt interaction with this. So we can give feedback like, I like that title, but can you p please make it a bit longer? And then that's going to, you know, let us know it can. Some of the thing, one of the things that does happen is we get into this situation. Sure, I can make it longer. What do you suggest? So it's definitely not GPT-4. And that's one thing I wanted to talk about. This is not GPT-4. It's not close to it. It is It is so far from GPT-4 in terms of the performance. You know, it's, it's still a fantastic tool. It is absolutely free. It is very easy to use and start to get into. But it, if you're expecting the level of quality of GPT-4, which you might based on the, on the name, right? Because there's some name collision here. Like it's called GPT-4 all. And, you know, that might be a little bit misleading to, to some people. So I just wanted to be clear, this is not at that level. It really can't be yet, right? It's running on CPU and it's like a one-click install. So I don't, th I don't think necessarily the expectation should be that it is at the level of GPT-4, like OpenAI's version, but it is definitely a, a neat tool. If you don't have experience with running these kinds of applications on your machine, I would definitely suggest this. If you just want something local that doesn't talk to an API or you know you don't have to have your data leave your network, this is great. Again, it's not gonna be as powerful, but we're making the trade off here that we're running this on CPU, right? And we're running it through a one click install. So I, you know, your mileage may vary with how useful you find the tool to be, but I find it to be useful enough that if this was my only option, I didn't want to pay the 20 bucks or whatever OpenAI's, you know, costs are these days in your local region, then, you know, this is better than nothing. And if you're just dipping your toes into this space, I really think this is a great way to do it. But it's it's still good. And let's talk about some of the customization we can do. So you'll see here that we have a couple things. This is like the refresh button. Then we have the ability to copy our conversation right to our clipboard for easy sharing. Then we have this cogwheel, which is pretty cool. We have not only these editable boxes for all of our kind of you know prompt related hyperparameters, but we also have this English language description, which I find to be very useful. You know, one of the things I think this tool is great for is if you're getting into this space, I know I'm kind of repeating myself here, but I, I just really believe it to be true. If you're getting into this space, you're just starting to work with LLMs or you're just trying to figure out how this whole prompt thing works. This is actually a great playground to do that. It explains what all of these things do. You know, why you might want to switch them around is a Google away or a ChatGPT away or 
a GPT for all away. And then it gives you this prompt template. So one of the things you'll notice with all of the kind of llama derivatives is that they all have this very similar prompt response chain. So that's because this is the, the model's going to get the information in this form, right? So in the case of this particular prompt, this percent one is going to be replaced by what you type into the box. Um, and so you can play around with this. You can change it as you see fit. And it's just nice to have that kind of customization or flexibility. So, I mean, you know, I definitely encourage you playing with these uh, with these options and seeing what you can make this thing do. And that's really it for the video. I mean, mostly I just wanted to highlight the tool and maybe, you know, clarify some of the hype that, that people might have seen. This is a great tool. It is fun. It's crazy you can click one button and then be using the tool. Absolutely. It's just definitely not at the level of those closed alternatives like your OpenAI GPT or Claude. So, you know, just uh, enjoy the tool, but be aware that I, th I think right now the hype sphere is is bubbling up and we, we have to temper our language and expectations about what these open source tools can do right now. And, you know, we want to be progressing them forward, but at the same time, uh, we have to be realistic about what they can achieve and, and how they work. So uh, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, please uh, press the like button and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.